In this example, we're going to see how the empirical rule can be used to answer specific questions about distribution. So in this example, it says that SAT math scores have a bell-shaped distribution, that's the same as normal, right? With a mean of 515 points and standard deviation of 114 points. Now, the first question here is that what percentage of SAT scores is between 401 and 629 points. So let's make some notes. It says that the scores have bell-shaped distribution, right? So I can sketch, I can sketch this. So let's say this is the distribution or its shape. Um, then it says that the mean is 515 points. Remember, normal distribution is symmetric, so that means that the mean will be right in the middle. 515 points. Now, we also know that standard deviation is 114. Um, remember, standard deviation measures the spread. Higher the standard deviation is, larger the spread of the distribution. Now, what percentage of SAT scores is between 400 and 6? 129 points. Now, since this, this distribution is bell-shaped or normal, we can use the empirical rule, and it's here shown. So, according to the empirical rule, we know that within one standard deviation away from the mean, within one, what it means is that if I add one standard deviation and then I subtract one, one standard deviation, so within this range, um, I will have 68% of all observations. Now, in the context of my example, it means that it's going to be 68% of all scores or 68% of all people that took that exam. Next, it says that within two standard deviations away from the mean, so if I take one, two steps to the right, and then one, two steps to the left, I will have in this range 95% of all observations. So it's going to be 95% of all people that took SAT. Uh, math exam, they're going to ha have their scores in this range. And within three standard deviations away from the mean, three steps to the left, three steps to the right, in this range from here to here, we'll have almost everyone, all people, and their scores. Uh, so it's 99.7, almost everyone. So that means that as we read this problem or this question, we need to figure out what is what that range is? So how far those values are from the mean? How many standard deviations away? Let's see what happens if we make one step to the right and one step to the left if the steps are standard deviations. So in other words, if I add 114, that, that's the standard deviation, and if I subtract 114, so plus... 114 minus 114. Where will I end up? I'm going to take calculator and add and subtract. Okay, so I just calculated if I add 114 to 515, um, I will get 629 right here. And if I subtract 114 from 515, I get 401. And these are exactly the numbers I have in this question, right? So I was able to obtain this range for the scores when I added and subtracted one standard deviation. So that number is one standard deviation. So if this range represents one standard deviation away from the mean, it, um, this indicates according to the empirical rule that 68% of SAT scores will be in that, in that range, 68% within one standard deviation away, plus standard deviation minus one standard deviation. So that's, that will be the answer, 68%. What percentage of SAT score, scores is between 401 and 629? 68% of SAT scores. Okay, let's try question B. What percentage of SAT scores is less than 
401 or greater than 629. Let's um, see what that question is asking. Now, I, I noticed that these are the same numbers, right? But what's the difference? Well, the difference is that in the first question it was between, but this time it's less than 401 and then greater than, greater than 629. I can go back to that same picture and between is over here, right? Between 401 and 629, and we said it was 68 percent. You know what? I'm gonna now show that on this picture. So in between, technically it should be symmetric. It doesn't look symmetric on my graph, so let me fix it just a little bit. Maybe like that. So in between we have 68%. This time we're being asked about percentage that represents scores that are less than 401. So where do I see scores um, that are less than or one, 401? They're over here, right? So it means that portion of my graph corresponding to less than 401 is actually over here, this portion. And then portion of that curve or area inside that curve, I should say, that's greater than 629 or corresponds to scores that are greater than 629. Greater than, right, it's to the right. It's going to be over here. So when I'm being asked to find percentage that corresponds to those scores, it's same as to find area that I just shaded. Well, how do we find that shaded area? And we'll use percentages for that. Well, I know that the total area under the normal curve is 1 or 100%. And that means that if I want to find the shaded regions or the area corresponding to the shaded regions, I just have to take all of that, which is 100%, and subtract portion that I don't want to include. So I don't want to include the portion that's in between, which I know is 68%. Um, and that's how I'm going to answer this question. Or I find answer to this question, I'm going to take 100%, which represents all scores. And I will subtract 68%, which are the scores between, between 401 and 629. And I will get 100 minus 68, that's 32%. So that's percent of scores, of SAT scores, 30% of SAT scores are less than 401, I'll just use math symbols, and greater than 629, okay? And finally, the last question here is, what percentage of SAT scores is greater than 743? So first we need to find out uh, to how many standard deviations away from the mean this, this number corresponds, right? 743. Well, obviously it's above the mean, right? Because mean is 515. But how many standard deviations do I have to add to get to 743? 43. So let's make another sketch over here. So here's my normal curve. Mean is right, the mean is right in the middle, 515. And we know that if we take one step to the right in terms of standard deviations, it's going to be 629. We already calculated it, right? About or check that. One more step. One step to the left, that's going to be 401. I'll just write that down since I already have that. But I haven't reached 743 yet, so um, let's make one more step to the right. So from the mean, that's the mean, right? That's right in the middle. We're at one third deviation, and then let's add one more. So 629 plus plus 114, and then plus another 114. Let me zoom this a little bit. 
that's what I have here. So my question is, what is this number? So let's do 629. 629 plus 114, that's 743. 743. And according to this question, we want to find percentage of SAT scores that's greater than 743. So, so greater, it means that's to the right. Well, percentage will be corresponding to the area on the normal curve. So that means that I want to find what this portion is. How do we find it? So these are going to be the steps. 743 is two standard de deviations away from the mean. Well, if I make two standard deviations to the left, and whatever number that is, I'll, I'll, I'll calculate it. I don't really need it, but I'll calculate it. So 401 minus 114. So that's 287, 287. So from here to here, from, from here to here, that means that from 287 up to 743, um, I have what percent of observations or what percentage of scores in this range. Well, since it's within two standard deviations away from the center, from the mean, according to the empirical rule, so one, two, one, two, two standard deviations away, it's going to be 95% of observations, right? So 95% right in the middle here. 95% from here, from 287 up to 743. Now that's 95%, but that's not quite what I need, right? I need this portion that's outside. Well, we're going to do something that we just did in, in question B. We will first find the combined area for those regions that are outside of 95% range. So in step one, let me write it here, step one. We're going to take 100%, that's the entire area under the normal curve, and subtract 95%. That will give me 5%. Now, what is 5%? 5% is the combined area. Uh, and we, if I describe it in the context of this question, then I will say that 5% of scores, of SAT scores, are less than 887 points and greater than 743 points. So 5% of SAT scores are less than 287 points and greater, no, greater than 743 points. Now, that's not quite what I need. Um, I don't need this less than part, right? I only need the greater than part according to my question. But how do I find it? Well, I know that everything is symmetric here, right? And those two regions outside of 287 and 743, they are um, of equal area. So I only need half of that combined area, right? So if I only need half, I just simply need to take that percentage and divide it by two. So in step two, I'm gonna take 5% and divide it by two. That gives me 2.5% and <clears throat> it only corresponds to, well, it's they are of the same area, right? So I can um, describe, use 2.5 to describe both areas, but I need only one that's above. So I'll say 2.5%, that's percent of SAT scores greater than 743 points. Okay, so now I can Raise that question mark and put 2.5%.
So that's the idea for using the empirical rule to answer questions like that about the distribution.